Good uh, afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Jakob Nielsen, and uh, I work in Grundfos uh, as a senior people analytics specialist. I've been working um, within the field of people analytics for the last three years, and um, my background is a bit different than than, than many HR co of my HR colleagues. I, I have a master's in business intelligence, but um, bringing those techniques I have from here into the people analytics world or into the people world is uh, it's really where I, I find uh, my motivation to work, uh, applying different techniques and, and, and stuff like that, and bringing the data into uh, to the business world from HR as well. Just uh, let me see if it works. It doesn't. Anyway. Um, just a short introduction of Grundfos as well, so you know what size we are. We are a pump manufacturing company. We are uh, more than uh, 75 years old, and uh, we are approximately 20,000 employees uh, worldwide. And, uh, and today we are going to, to, uh, to have a focus on, um, on the employees um, from, um, from the diversity, equity, and inclusion perspective. So uh, please, uh, please proceed. I want to share the aspiration of uh, of the DNI in uh, Grundfos, and I'll just give you a, a second to uh, to uh, to read it, and then uh, let, let's talk a bit about it. And it's also because, and um, we have um, these words here, as I just see it right now. Um, when we put something up here, we need to figure out how do we put actions into it um, to make to me be sure that um, that that we also fulfill and walk the talk. So here, when we say that people uh, in Grundfos is one of the um, the most important uh, thanks a lot, Stephen uh, assets we have, which if not the most important, then. Um, uh, at least we need to to make sorry uh, I just lost it um, we are putting <laughs> we are putting um, actions into these words and i 'm going to show you how because we have been on this journey for the last couple of years where we uh, we went uh, from talking about diversity in gender only to actually expand it into to several areas and that journey is i 'm going to take you through today is in three steps. Uh, the first episode will be before 2020. We're going back to 2018. Then let's uh, let's have the the huge transformation within our DNI journey in uh, in 2020 and 2021. And then I'm giving you a sneak peek of um, where we are going to to be in 2025, or at least our ambitions for it. So let's jump into it. As you probably uh, have done yourself. Uh, female leadership position is some of the places where you can get some uh, some rather quick insights because a lot of companies do have the gender data. We wanted to also measure it, and uh, from the 2017 data, we had a baseline on 20% of our female leadership positions. Um, we then said, okay, we are in 2018 right now. What can we achieve within 2020? Um, and um, we set the target to be 25%, which is approximately 100 positions that should be transferred into, um, into um, a position uh, held by a female. One of the things here is that we were not that mature yet. Uh, so to setting the frame around it, we only focused on the gender diversity here. It was driven from the uh, COE by the culture and leadership specialist. And just to also put some commitment into it, we also put these numbers into the CSR, so the uh, Corporate Social Responsibility Report, as a target. So we started to uh, communicate it publicly. We succeeded almost. 20 almost got there in time. But we also actually got motivated to expand it. A lot of things was happening around the world, especially in the U.S., um, and we also wanted to, uh, to, 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 of course, support that, um, that uh, course. And uh, it was a good business. That's something we could see. So why not focus on it? So the question here is, 
that you also should ask yourself when when you start to to go into uh, to the um, to the DNI. Uh, what should you focus on? Because it's actually something that changes and is uh, case specific. We didn't know where to start, so we had to uh, to 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 get some help. The good thing here is that um, we had the buy-in from 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 the top as well. So we had a CHO who supported the agenda. She uh, changed some things. We got a head of DEI, and that person who was uh, the former uh, culture and leadership specialist uh, went out and spoke with a lot of vendors, finding out who could actually help us on this journey, finding out what should we focus on. And we also made an agreement. Um, and I'm not saying that you should go out and, and buy these uh, competences from, from outside, but in our case, it was what, uh, what was right for us. So I'm not saying that you should follow that. But uh, we started with, uh, with Boston Consulting Group, and uh, they introduced a couple of techniques uh, or methods that, uh, that we uh, initiated uh, in Gunfors as well. The first one is what we call workforce inclusion scorecard and evaluation, or in short, WISE. The WISE analysis, where you look at the uh, diversity numbers, you look at your own data, uh, so the HR master data, you slice and dice it, you find out how, um, how your organization is, is looking from here. This is the objective picture of, of, of your company. This is where you just look at, at the basics. This is also what's easy to report on. But we actually wanted to, to make a more holistic picture of the company. We wanted to, to actually get closer to the employees and, and understand how they perceive it. So the second thing that was introduced was what we call DIAL, so Diversity and Inclusion Assessment for Leaders. This is a survey-based technique where we uh, surveyed a lot of, uh, actually we, we surveyed all the employees. They were every, everyone was invited um, of the 20,000 employees. Um, and, and we got a response rate here on, on 25%. So that was the, the, the foundation we had. This is not something that you just do. Um, we had a huge work to do uh, on, um, on the legal side because what we're actually asking about in a survey like this was sexual orientations and, and other stuff. So really personal stuff where when you do that, you need to have the ethics right. Um, especially when we also want to, to survey people in, in, in Germany, for example, where, where works councils are, uh, are uh, uh, a very good thing to have, of course, but we also need to make sure that, that we are having their approval to, uh, to get through. Having these two things, um, we could put together some, um, some findings and some areas we wanted to target. We also did some, uh, some other things, but that was not focused on from the people analytics side, but uh, but Boston Consulting Group also helped us with a belief audits for our executive management team to understand their ambitions for, for the company. They ha held the focus group interviews and much more. One thing I just want to mention here as well about the ethics is that we didn't get the data ourselves. We had a third party vendor conducting that analysis for us, so we only had the aggregated numbers. and. Of course, I should not be able to go down and see what, uh, what my colleagues in, in the productions area uh, have of that. That's not something uh, I should be involved with. But it's still nice to know when we need to find out. So, uh, so having an, uh, a vendor here was important. And that's also my recommendation if, if you want to go into that direction that you actually get a third party vendor here. What came out of it? It's actually what you, what you see here. It's the five key team themes we have set for 2025. We want to focus on, on leadership commitment. We want to have our leaders our role models. We want to have that perceived uh, perception from the employees that we are walking the talk. So putting actions into the words you saw uh, earlier. We want an inclusive culture where we can be a true self, be a whole self, we want people to feel invited and, uh, and welcomed into the company. And that's something we, we are following up on every year as well. We still look into the gender balance here. We are still focusing on advancement and recruitment of women. We want to, to lift it to even higher heights than now. Um, we also focus on what we call early career development. Um, looking into the data, we found out that when we look at people that are uh, 
having an age of maximum 35 years uh, yeah, of age and a maximum of five years of seniority. We, we had a huge chunk who actually left voluntarily. And of course we know that's, that's something young people do. They probably are in the first job, finding out that the business they are, uh, they are in is not what they, they wanted, or they just need uh, new challenges. But we still wanted to actually do something about it, also because uh, the turnover was high. And lastly, we, we focus on reduced work capacity. Uh, that's actually something Grundfos has been doing for a lot of years, but not uh, in the scale that we're talking about now. And we wanted to expand that from just being in the production side to also be in the office areas as well. Again, this is just the key, key themes about uh, diversity, equity, inclusion. We actually, in 2021, initiated approximately 30 uh, initiatives uh, focusing on, um, on all these areas. Um, I'm not going through all of them, but uh, a few has been uh, picked out here. Um, and this is one of my recommendations as well. Um, you need to communicate, you need to increase awareness. And why is that? When you work with people and you work with diversity, equity, and inclusion, you are working with the culture of the com company. You're going to not something that is actually basic assumptions. So if you want to create a more inclus inclusive culture, you need to talk about it all the time to make the awareness. Uh, you need to make presentations. You need to, to uh, ne make newsletters. You need to bring it up in the town halls. That's super important uh, as we saw it. Another thing I want to highlight is, is that, we, um, that we have the HR dashboard where we can, on some of the numbers, be transparent and share them all the time. So every month people can go in and see what is the gender balance? Uh, how is it going with the recruitment? Uh, are we getting there? And then a very cool thing, we have a DNI council now. Um, the DNI council uh, was created based uh, on in, in 2020 and is um, driven by 10 senior leaders globally. And as a great support from our executive management team, they have uh, received uh, decision rights within the field of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So they can actually make decisions based on uh, or for Grundfos without going through the executive team. And that's pretty cool that they have so much trust to give a council that, that power in, in a company like ours that are so big. One thing which I'm uh, part of myself is the re employee resource groups, the ERGs. Um, this is group, groups that are driven voluntarily by employees. This is, for example, the early careers. It could be, uh, we also have uh, prior to Grundfos, we have uh, the, the, uh, the special abilities in Grundfos. People are put together if they want to, and then they are more or less driven the agenda themselves. Um, I can share more about that later. The last thing I want to mention here is that we are also trying to do something where we are not sure how it will go. So we are right now drive, driving a neurodiversity pilot in Hungary where we have hired in um, four people on the autism spectrum. And for now it actually seems to be going very well. They need, they need another setting, but they actually managed to carry out the work. So we are trying to bring this into the, into the company as well. Um, I think it's, uh, it's amazing how much you can do when you have the insights and the numbers uh, to build all this on. So this is where we as a people analytics function could bring in this. Should we also look a bit ahead? We are, we are quite ambitious uh, to say. And we, um, I'm going to focus on, 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 on these numbers here. Um, and that's because this is what we have in the HR master data. So think back of the Ys and the dial. The Ys is the objective one where we can get the data from, um, from, from our own data. Uh, this is what you also can see in the HR dashboard. Um, the other thing is surveys we are sending out um, every, every year. Just to, to make it clear, we, we are trying to make a balance 
Um, so it's not like we are trying to 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 drive out men and stuff like that. At least that's not how I feel. So uh, I'm still welcomed, and that's super important that we are still inclusive. But we need to focus on even out the balance gap. And um, and here, for example, when when we have this uh, share of women uh, of the new hires versus the representation, is that um, if we are 75% of females, um, then at least the hire rate should also be 75% of the uh, of the candidates that we hire in to have this balance on on on, on an even one. On, and I did purposely put a high number here. We are not there yet, but. Um, just just to, to, to make it clear. One thing I want to focus on also, now we are here, people analytics practitioners, is that I'm going to focus a bit on the early career development, um, which is uh, the group where we have a high amount of turnover, which of course we knew, but we still want to, to do something about it. So now I'm changing the background also to say that now we have been looking into the to the uh, to the data and what came out of it on the diversity equity and inclusion um, um, theme. Now I'm going to dig into a specific uh, topic here. So this is how could people analytics team then build further on this? How can we support the business after conducting a so uh, huge diagnostic of the company? So we uh, we looked into. Uh, to, to a road, uh, we conducted a root cause, uh, cause analysis on, on, on voluntary turnover, and we, uh, we had two personas we, we wanted to, 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 to find out more about, and we have the blue and the white color. We could see of the white colors, they were a bit older compared with the blue colors, uh, probably because they spent more time on educating themselves before they started work. Uh, they leave on around two years of, of seniority, um, where when we look at the blue colors, they, they leave just before two years. Um, none of them have received a promotion in that time they've been working there. And on the white color part, um, it was regardless of the gender where we could see it was especially the men in the blue color area uh, who left us the most. Uh, this was carried out uh, on uh, on a logistic regression to finding out uh, what are the probabilities of 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 a certain uh, persona to leave. How did we do this? Um, it was actually quite extensive. We uh, we started doing desktop research, finding out what is actually uh, from the uh, from the academic world uh, pointing in direction of staying and leaving. Um, we also looked into the own data, looking into exit interviews, uh, looking into exit reasons uh, turned in by the managers to find out what are the root causes when, when we just asked them about it. We conducted semi-structured interviews where we invited people within this, ca uh, this uh, category to, to find out what is actually on their mind. All that we put together, together with an analysis, where we, uh, where we could see the, the biggest player as well across all of this was career development. So this is where we conclude that this will be one of the new focus areas for us as well, that now we know that career development is important at, and if young employees do not see that, then they just leave or find new opportunities, new challenges uh, elsewhere. And uh, this is um, a way where we, as a people analytics function, also find new tasks to work on for ourselves. We uh, started looking into diversity, equity, inclusion in general. Then we looked into root co cause analysis on turnover. Now we are looking into uh, to learning and development. So we are also creating task for self, helping the business, trying to get it, the business moving a little faster in a direction of where we of course want to in this, in this manner, it's the diversity. Um, so this is also just to share uh, and, and motivate you to, to when, when you start to dig into an area, then you actually don't know where you are next time you look because when you start digging, you, you find super interesting things. One thing I didn't tell about 
the myself uh, I, I decided to 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 say for now is that on my working time I'm spending half of the time working as a people analytics specialist partner towards the business helping some of the div divisions looking into the data and finding out what to look at the other part I, I spend on, on projects like this uh, where we are more focused on the group and the and and and, and other uh, support functions so my role here is also with all this knowledge from the one part of my job sitting down with my uh, senior directors uh, in, in, in the divisions I support and look into their specific areas on the DEI measures because we have a, a common target in Gonfas, but each division is different. And this is where we, um, together with the business leaders, are looking into what should they do, what are their, uh, their situation. And so, so we are trying to, uh, to break it down into smaller pieces. So we we are four divisions, but so we are four supporting the one ambition in, in Grundfos. This is uh, what I had to share with you, and um, I'm now um, opening up for questions. Yeah.